Hi, welcome back to Banker Bell's Yarning. Today is Tuesday, October 1st. My job is here, oh my god. Uh, so it's Tutorial Tuesday. So I've decided instead of doing two videos on Tuesdays, I'm just gonna do one. Um, so we'll have the Q&A at the beginning, and then I will put in a break screen, and then we'll do the tutorial for the, the, the square for that, that week. Okay, so this week we're doing the basket weave and knit. Um, and for our Q&A, we're actually gonna do three questions in one answer. So, the questions are from Patsy, Nikki, and Barbara, and they want help reading patterns and charts, and writing patterns. So, Patsy says help, you know, how do you read patterns, um, or I'd like help reading patterns. Nikki says how do you write a pattern, there was lots of, you know, inspiration questions and stuff like that. And then Brenda uh, is having issues reading charts. So we'll take a look at the charts first, um, just because it's in the easiest explanation. And then we'll take a look at patterns and reading patterns. Um, and then I will uh, talk to you about writing patterns. Uh, and that goes hand in hand with uh, questions from Jeannie's Creations. Now, I'm sorry about this if it's Tressa or Teresa, I am not entirely sure, and I apologize. Um, and then one from Brenda as well. Um, so yeah, we got a lot going on. So let's take a look at charts. I'm just gonna flip the camera around. All right, so here's a little chart that I just really quickly drew up. Um, so we'll, we'll do um, corner to corner, and we'll also do uh, single crochet so that we can actually uh, take a look at both. Uh, both graph gans here. Um, so this also works for fillet crochet and all that that wonderful stuff. So for corner to corner, um, you need to uh, choose which corner you're starting from. So are you going to start from this corner? Are you going to start from this corner? You can even start from up here if you want to. It really doesn't matter where you start as long as you keep track of the direction that you're going. All right. So for uh, corner to corner, I'm going to color coordinate these so that we don't get lost. Uh, so for corner to corner, I'm, I'm going to start down here, okay? And most charts will tell you um, how many squares are one stitch. If they don't, then assume that one square is one stitch. It's the easiest way to do it. So we're going to do here. So corner to corner, um, those that know how to do it will understand this. Um, if you've never done corner to corner before, check out... Uh, Mikey and the crochet crowd, they do a fantastic corner to corner um, tutorial on that. So this square here, I don't know how well you can actually see the grid lines, um, but we're going to start here. So this square, okay, that'll be my first square. So I'm going to mark it off. All right. Now I need to decide after I do my first square if I'm going in this direction or if I'm going in this direction. All right. So I usually go this way. That's just me. So this would be your second square here. Okay, and then this would be your third square here. Okay, so we're gonna color that in, just like that. Now you can use a pencil or you can use markers, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So I went this way. So usually when I'm doing uh, corner to corners, I use arrows instead of filling them in. So we went this way, so that means that we're gonna go this way for this corner here. Okay, so mark it like that. And then we're doing this one, this one, this one. Okay, and I, I usually just do this so that I know what direction that I left off in. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that. Here, let's move that down. There. Ooh, having severe camera issues today. All right, so shadow, hopefully you can see through the shadow there. Um, so I just did little arrows, and then when we're going back the other way, we're gonna do here I'm gonna down here so we can see better. Oh, pardon my camera. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna go back the other way. So this one here, we're gonna go this way. Okay, there we go. Into the light a little bit better there. All right, so we're gonna go back this way, there, 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 All right, Oop. there, 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 I missed one, there, there, there we go, 
All right, so you see how I'm doing it that way. You can also color coordinate it. I had a, had a pink one, but it's gone now. So one direction is one color and the other direction is the other color. So we'll start at the other corner then and we'll take a look at that. All right, so we do one direction is one. So we're gonna do um, this way in orange and we'll do this way in green. All right, you gotta make notes on these things, otherwise you'll lose track of where you are. So square one, okay? And then square two, because we're going in the other direction, we're gonna mark it off like this, okay? Just like that. And then back in the other way, there, there, and there. All right, so this will also work for Tunisian because um, you can do a Tunisian corner to corner as well, or you can do a Tunisian uh, graph gam. Uh, and again, one block is, is one set of stitches. So now we're going to go back up this way because you see our arrow goes in that direction. There, 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 and there. Okay? So that's that. Now for uh, single crochet, well, I'm going to start up at the top here. Um, one square is... So they'll tell you how many uh, squares is one stitch or how many stitches per square, right? So we're going to go with the idea that one stitch is one square. Now don't use this particular chart for uh, single crochet just because it'll come out all weird and wonky. It'll come out squished. Um, but so one square. So again, you're going to mark your direction that you're going in. So you don't have to fill in squares because you're doing single crochets, right? So we start in that direction, okay? And then we move over here because we got to the end of the row, right? And we're going to go back in this direction. Okay, and that's how I mark them. And I usually do it in pencil so that I can do it again uh, another time. Not that I actually repeat patterns, um, but it's it's easier to keep track if you if you use pencil. All right, so you just mark the way it goes. Now there are charts out there that have uh, symbols. Okay, so uh, let's say that. Um, this is our, right, let's say that this is our blanket, just like this. Okay, so there's the chart for our blanket, and we're going to mark it like this. Okay, so there will be a legend for um, stitches, okay? So depending on what it is you're doing, um they'll give you a list of what each stitch means so x means one thing dot means another uh those of you that knit um you'll understand that normally uh your uh, x or line is a knit and your your circle or your uh, dot is a, a purl um so we'll just say that in in this particular instance we're going to do uh single crochets is an x and uh double crochets is a dot okay so you would do uh, single double single double single double single double again you want to mark which direction you're going in and then when we go back all right we'll say that it's double so I would do this okay just like that okay the whole chart will be filled in um, you can also get them you can also find charts that are like this, all right, and most of it's blank. It's just the little area in the middle that has um, I lost where I was going. Here we go. Uh, that has directions for um, for your stitching, all right? So again, legend. Um, if not, then, well, they'll, they'll give you a legend for what these are. Um, and then these are usually, depending on what the stitch is, will, de will determine what these stitches are. Um, or the pattern will say uh, all done in you know, double crochets and then the march stitches are your puff stitches. All right, so you would do uh, double, 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 all the way across. And again, you're gonna mark which direction you're going in. And then we're gonna go back the other way for the next row, right? So this is 
double, 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 and then we're going to go back in this direction. Okay, so we have double, 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 we have puff stitch here, and then we have double, 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 and then we're going to mark going back the other way, and so on and so forth, all the way up. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question when it comes to charts. Uh, if I haven't been clear, let me know, and I'll try and figure out an easier way to explain this. So, on to reading patterns. So, patterns, oops, got some serious camera issues today. Uh, so, pattern writing. Okay, so, this is my Happy Little Skulls Milo Minute. Um, this is available in Ravelry for free. Um, I'll also pop a little um, a link to the actual PDF. Uh, into the comment section, uh, sorry, in the description section. So every pattern uh, will have what you are to use. So in this particular one, this pattern is worked with two strands together of two weight yarn. Okay, so it's a baby weight yarn. Um, so you go out and you find your baby weight yarn or your your um, your no, your no, uh, two weight yarn. Um, and then strips will need approximately 900 yards and the border and joining will need approximately 1,000 yards. So um, each of the strips here, each of these strips, okay, there's five of them. So you need, not, you need 900 yards. So you pick up 900 yards. I usually suggest that you pick up a little bit more uh, just because your, uh, your tension is going to be different than other people's. So I would pick up 1,000 for this. Um, if this wasn't my pattern, so I'd pick up a thousand for that. All right, and then uh, the border here, where the white is, the joining in the border. Uh, I don't know how many of you have done a mile a minute, but anyways. So the border here, it requires a thousand yards. Okay, so I would probably pick up uh, eleven or twelve hundred yards just to be just to be on the safe side. And then it tells you what hook you're supposed to use. All right, and then it gives a legend of your stitches. So these are the stitches that you're going to use. And then you just chain one, turn at the end of each row. So when you get to the end of each row, you're going to chain one and turn. Okay, and then here's these directions for strips, and you want to make five of them. Okay, so chain 14. Okay, again, it gives you what the stitch is up here. Okay, and then round one, we're going to SC. So we're going to look up here, and it says single crochet. All right, and the second chain from the hook, and each stitch across. All right. And then we are going down to, so row two and row three are the same. So that's uh, HDC. So again, we're going to look up here, half double crochet. All right, so we're going to HDC in each stitch across. Round four, we're going to go back to single crochets. So you single crochet each stitch across. And then number five, we have four DC. So that means you make four double crochets. So the next four stitches are double crochets. And then chain one, skip one and then one double crochet. So after you've skipped a stitch, the next stitch is the double crochet. And then you're gonna chain one, and you're gonna skip one, and then the one after the, stip, the skipped is gonna be one DC, and then chain one, skip one, and then four double crochets. So the last four stitches in the row are gonna be double crochets. Okay, and then because up here it says chain one and turn at the end of each row, you're gonna chain one and turn. Okay, we're here. So this will be a chain one and turn. Okay, and then we move on to the next row. All right, and you just follow that through. Um, if you're unsure about, like if we come up on, uh, like this one here, SC2TOG, all right? I didn't put it in the explanation up there, unfortunately. Uh, but again, you would go back to your stitches used, all right? And it's single crochet two together, all right? And then you move on from there. And then the border, all right? It gives you again what the border is, all right? And then how to assemble it and then an outside border, all right? So um, if you're doing working in the round, it'll tell you to slip stitch to, get to join, or it will give you another instruction if you're supposed to join it in another way. I have one pattern where you join it with a, with a half double crochet, um, which is just a really fancy way of joining stuff. Um, or again, it'll be like this, all right? At the, at the beginning of the pattern, it'll say slip stitch to join at the end of each row. So, I hope that answered your questions about reading about reading patterns. All right, now I'm just going to turn the camera around so that we can talk about writing patterns. All right, so writing patterns. Um, this particular one that we were just looking at, I wrote that. I have a number of patterns that I've written in my Ravelry folder, uh, or my Ravelry store, sorry. Um, and 
I do write patterns for uh, Darn Good Yarn, and I am currently writing patterns for uh, teaching uh, crochet. So beginner's crochet and introduction to crochet. Um, how do I write patterns? Uh, I just kind of do. <laughs> so uh, let's start at the beginning. So inspiration. So how the process works. So I honestly, I troll the internet, Pinterest, uh, crochet groups, uh, books, whatever I can get my hands on. Um, I, I go through those uh, to get inspiration. So I have a folder in my... Um, on my phone that has all screenshots of uh, things that look interesting. Now, I don't copy patterns. Um, I don't, pardon me, I don't make patterns and then change them. Uh, I used to, that's how I started, because um, I was going through patterns and I was like, ah, oh, this is boring, and then I'd just change it up a little bit and I'd be like, oh, hey, look at that, that's so much better. Um, now, I would never, a, never say that I wrote that pattern um, if I make modifications to to somebody else's writing um, it's kind of plagiarism which isn't cool uh, so I would uh, like if I was posting it or whatever or I was um, selling it uh, I would definitely uh, give kudos to the person that wrote it originally so I'd say you know uh, original pattern by so-and-so um, and I made modifications to it uh, so that's that's how I started um, was just making modifications um, and then I just kind of went from there. I worked on Sophie's Universe uh, several years ago. Oh, no, sorry, Sophie's Garden. Um, a beautifully written pattern, uh, absolutely gorgeous. Most of you probably heard about it. Um, it's one of the all-time most popular patterns out there for blankets. It is a gorgeous pattern. Um, I will never, ever, ever make another one again, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, that was my, uh, that was my bane. Everybody's got one, right? Whether it be black yarn or uh, single crochets or crocheting along the chain. Mine is Sophie. Love it. Never again. Um, I actually gave that to my mother. I made it, uh, my mother-in-law. I made it as a, a scrap game. Turned out wonderfully and she loves it. Uh, anyways, so I got inspiration from that one uh, to write my flowers and butterflies. Uh, throw uh throw um one of my p most popular patterns uh again it's in my ravelry store i'll also post the pdf link directly in the comments uh so that was the the first real pattern that i wrote um i had been dabbling in making hats and and slippers and, and scarves and stuff like that um just free form so i would just you know chain however many I felt like chaining and then I would do a certain number of rows in one stitch and then I would change the stitches and so on and so forth. That's usually the easiest way to get started uh, so you can get the rhythm and the and the comfortability for writing patterns. Um, so start with a scarf, start with a hat, start with a pair of slippers, all right, stuff that you know, stuff that you crochet regularly. Um, I'm really big into blankets and shawls and wraps. I love doing them. Um, just because they're so versatile and there's something that could be used all the time by whoever I'm giving it to. Um, and again, I've made so many of them from other patterns that it, I just kind of took the next natural step um, into creating my own. Uh, a great place to start writing a pattern is a sampler. Um, so whether you do sampler blocks, so that's a block of all the same stitch, um, or you do rows of stitches so you what you do is you sit down and you get x number of of stitches that you really like uh find the directions for them on pinterest or online um and then you just kind of combine them uh in whatever way you want uh so whether if you're doing squares then you do one square of all one uh, one stitch and then uh another square of a different stitch or a stitch sequence uh so a stitch sequence is um when you it use multiple stitches in order to create a look. So um, if you're doing, I don't know, cabling, all right? So a stitch sequence would be um, your double crochets and then your front posts and, and all of that kind of stuff. So you, you write down the directions for the stitch. Um, you cannot copyright stitches. Um, it's, it is intellectual property, yes, but it's a concept. Um, so you really can't say, oh, you can't ever use that stitch. You can't, you can't claim that stitch as your own. Um, 
because you're not claiming it as your own. You're, what you're doing is your um, you're copywriting the combination of stitches so uh, and how they fall together and how they put together. So um, you, do, you do sampler block, all right, and you do X number of sampler blocks uh, and each block is different or you have five different ones and you do two of them. Um, like my, uh, my, the tutorial Tuesday blocks that we're doing, um, they're, they're all sampler blocks. So I find stitches that I like um, that are great building blocks so that you get used to uh, doing those stitches over and over again. Um, and then you put all of them together and you have a sampler blanket. Um, or if you do stripes, you know, you do one stripe of uh, single crochets and then you do the next stripe, you're going to do all puff stitches. And then the next one, you're going to do this stitch and so on and so forth. Um, you write it down. Write everything down, right? Whether it works out or not, write it down, right? So get a notebook. I have, uh, I actually have several notebooks here like this. All right, they're a great book. Love them. Um, I also have smaller ones that I use when I'm traveling um, or taking notes in or whatever. Um, I have one for, for my videos that I write everything down on. I have another one for my darn good yarn patterns um, and I have another one for my personal patterns. Um, I use the pages because I prefer writing in pen over pencil. Uh, that's just me. I don't know why, I just do. Um, yeah, write everything down. Write everything down. Uh, yarn approximations. Uh, for it, you take a general um, a general idea of how much yarn you're going to need based on other patterns, right? So uh, if you want to do something as complicated as, um, as Sophie, right? You take a jump start off how many yards Sophie requires, all right? So say, and I'm, I'm not saying this is the amount of yarn that they need, but say uh, it takes 1,200 yards to make a blanket that you really like, that you want to you wanna make something similar to. So that's where you start and then add a bit because there'll be mistakes. You're going to, you, it's just, it is what it is. Um, when you're writing patterns, you will pull it out a lot, especially at the beginning. You're going to frog and you're going to stitch and you're going to frog and you're going to stitch um, because your counts might be off. Uh, you're, uh, you don't like what it looks like. Uh, you want to do a different color. Um, you want to change the position of that particular stripe or that particular row. Um, so you will, you will frog a lot. Uh, but again, write it all down. Ev write everything down. Uh, yeah. On my Facebook uh, group, Finger Bells Yarning Facebook group, uh, I have pinned some uh, stitch abbreviations. So you might want to take a look at that. I'll also, I'll, yeah, I'll be able to post it in um, in the description here as well uh, as a straight PDF pattern. Uh, so you can use that as reference. Now it doesn't have every stitch abbreviation out there, uh, but it does have a, a good number of them, um, and some of the more uh, out there ones, ones that you're not going to see very often. Um, so there's knit, Tunisian, and crochet abbreviations in that file. So I think that's pretty much it for writing patterns, reading patterns, and charts. So on to, uh, let's start with Brenda. So Brenda was asking for lightweight baby blanket patterns. Um, you can honestly use any blanket pattern that you like and just make it smaller. All right, just like you can take a baby pattern and make it bigger. Change your yarn weight and your hook. It's that simple. All right, so the flowers and butterflies throw, uh, like I said, I'm gonna pop it into the description here. Um, you could definitely take that and turn it into a baby blanket by using a baby weight yarn and a smaller hook, right? Because it calls for a worsted weight and a five and a half, I believe it is. Um, so change it to you know a DK or a baby weight and use a, a four or a three hook. You've now changed the size. You're still following the same pattern. You're just making it smaller, right? You want a bigger one of it. You go with a bulky and you go up to a six or a seven hook, or you go into an extra bulky, um, like Woolies and you go up to a nine hook, then you're going to get a massive blanket, right? Fit it, it'll fit on your queen size or king size bed. It'll be huge. Um, but again, super simple. Just find a blanket you like. If it's too big to be a baby blanket, change the hook size, change the yarn. 
Okie dokie. So, and again, um, you want to go based on um, the number of yards. If you're, when you're changing the sizes and using different, um, different hooks and, and types of yarn, um, it's a good to ballpark with what the, the original pattern is um, and then add some. All right, if you're doing, if you're going up, definitely add. Um, I would, by the time you get to uh, a six or extra bulky weight, you should have double the amount of yarn that you need. Um, just because of the, the nature of the stitches in a larger, uh, in a larger uh, hook and a larger, uh, a larger size blanket. Um, for the uh, DK weight, stay the same. Um, for the uh, baby weight, I would also stay the same. Uh, you can always return yarn. Uh, not that most of us probably do. I don't think I've ever returned yarn. Uh, you can also just keep it in your stash. All right, or make another one. So hopefully that answered your question, Brenda. Uh, so Tressa or Teresa, I'm sorry again. I don't know which one you, you go by. Um, my favorite crochet shawl. <laughs> um, so I very rarely follow patterns written by other people. Um, and that's not a vanity thing. It's a boredom thing. Um, I get very bored with the same stitch over and over and over again. Um, <coughs> Uh, just because that's that's me. I'm all over the place all the time. Um, I have, goodness, how many patterns do I currently have going on? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six patterns right now going on. Um, that's including the, the blocks that we're doing um, on here for Tutorial Tuesdays. So uh, if I'd had to pick one, um, I absolutely love doing the Lost Souls shawl. Uh, that was so much fun. And it was actually what inspired my uh, Angela's Happy Little Skulls wrap. Uh, that was by far one of my favorites to write. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, that one and my uh, Glenda's Scrappy Cat wrap. All right, it's, a, it's actually a shrug. It's a, a mid-arm shrug. Um, and it has a cat stitch pattern along the back and then um, a different one on the sleeve. So that was that was a lot of fun to write too. Um, so those are two of my favorite ones. Uh, in a pinch, if I need a shawl now for whatever reason, um, then the virus by all means, uh, only because it's super quick to work up. And I usually double the yarn. Um, so it's two strands of four together. Uh, if you're doing that, you do end up with a bigger uh, blanket and you have to double the yarn that you use. All right, so uh, I don't think there's a specific yardage for uh, the virus it's just a repeat pattern you make it as big as you want um, so say that you want you know you we'll say you need 1200 you want to use 1200 yards okay and you're gonna double that if you're gonna use, add second strand so you're gonna need uh, 2400 yards right because you're doing two strands together it makes a bigger beautiful uh, pattern um, it's also a great opportunity to combine colors without doing color stripes um, so there's that. But other than that, I don't really have a favorite shawl. I don't wear shawls. I write patterns for shawls because they're popular. Yeah. Uh, and Jeannie. Uh, so I'm adding this question in just because it's, it's very relevant to uh, what we've been talking about here today. Um, so she wants to know uh, what is the best length of circular needle? That's yeah, that's a, a depending on question. So uh, there's so many lengths out there. You can go from nine inches to, I think you can get 48 inches. Um, uh, you can special order 63 inches. Uh, so it depends on what you're doing as to um, your, your length of circular needle. Um, so for our tutorials, I use a nine. All right, so this is a nine. Okay, and they're measured from tip to tip. Okay, they're not measured from here to here. Okay, tip to tip. Okay, 
Um, so this is great for small projects like squares um, and hats. If you choose to do a circular needle uh, hat, um, I prefer circular needles just because I always end up losing <laughs> one of the pair and I just have one needle. Um, uh, luckily, actually, one of the thrift stores uh, near me sells individual needles. Right? It's literally a bin of random needles and you have to sit there and go through it uh, to match them up. So. I'm not the only one that loses single needles because there's always a ton of singles in there. Uh, you know, you get a 10 needle and only one, right? Or you've got a blue five and a pink five. Now you have two fives, but they're both different colors. Uh, so it's nice to know I'm not the only one out there that loses needles. Um, so this, a small one like this is fantastic for, uh, for small things like socks, hats, that kind of stuff. Um, and anything that doesn't exceed 80 stitches, 60 to 80 stitches. Um, when you're doing larger pieces, um, then you would go up to a 12 or a 14, um, or even a 24. Um, if you're buying one circular needle, I would definitely go with a five and a half. That's millimeters, I mean Canada, don't forget that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely go with a five and a half, uh, just because it's right in the middle of the two most popular. So there's a five and a six. Um, so your, your projects will be either a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, um, than what the gauge shows. But unless you're making a sweater or shorts or a top, like a wearable piece that needs specific measurements. Um, so if you're doing wraps or blankets or, or shawls or stuff like that, Gauge is not the most important thing, uh, unless you want to make it exactly like the person wrote it uh, and have exactly the same proportions. Um, but unless you're doing a piece of clothing, gauge is really not the most relevant thing, right? You'll just end up with something smaller or bigger depending on the needle size that you use. Um, so I would go with a five and a half and I would go with an 18 or a 24. Depends on what you're planning on making. If you're planning on making uh, blankets, go with a 24. Your stitches are gonna be a little crunched on it, um, but you'll thank me for the length. Uh, if you're only planning on doing small things like uh, short side scarves, so that's where you just do the short side of the scarf all the way up, um, or if you're doing hats or socks or stuff like that, then go with a nine. Um, but uh, your 18 or 24 will serve you for uh, pretty much every project, right? You'll just have extra extra um, cable when you're doing smaller projects that's all all right so hopefully that answered everybody's questions for today um, again if you heard your your question um, on today's video then give me a shout out I have stickers this time for you guys I don't know where they went my office is kind of a bit of a mess because everybody's been all over the place ah here we go stickers stickers all right remember last week they were magnets today they're stickers and next week they're gonna be something else but it's definitely swag Woo. all right so that's it for uh, Q&A so I'm just gonna turn the camera around and we'll take we'll start on our uh, tutorial for today okay all right, so here we go um, yes I'm on black today but that's because I'm I'm too blazy too lazy to get out my whiteboard <laughs> so for our purposes it will it'll work because we're using a lighter a lighter colored uh, let me know if you prefer the black over the white or if you prefer the white over the black okay so to start we're gonna do 32 stitches right so cast on 32 um, the I know we usually use 30 but our first and last stitches are gonna be knit regardless of what our sequence is All right, just gives a nice clean edge so we're gonna start with our first knit stitch and I use a long tail cast on just in case you're you're curious. Okay, so our first stitch is a knit, and then we're gonna do ah, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, 
Okay, and this is a six by six pattern, just for those of you that are interested. And then we're gonna do six purl. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Right, and then yarning back, and we're gonna do six again. There's one, two, three, four, five, and uh, six. My hands are not very cooperative today. And then we're gonna go back the other way here. And we're going to do six purl. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, so I saw a really cool video um, the other day. Um, we're going to go back over here and we're going to do six purl six knit so this girl was knitting both continental and english with she was working with two colors so she had one color going english and the other color going uh continental so that was pretty cool and four five and six so what she was doing was uh each stitch was a different color right so our last stitch we're going to knit Right, regardless of what we're ending with. Okay, and then we're gonna go back the other way. Okay, and you're gonna do exactly the same. So we're gonna knit the knit. So we're gonna knit our first one. Okay, and then we're gonna do six knit. So she her each stitch was a different color. So she had one color in one hand and one color in the other hand, and then she would do one, two, one, two, one, two. It was really cool. That's three. Four, five, and six. Okay, and then we're gonna purl back the other way. So it, it's definitely something that I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a go. I really liked what it, what it looked like there. And there's one up here. And two. I know it might be a little bit dark for you guys, but I moved my my office around. Three. Four. That camera shot there. Five and six. So I haven't, uh, anyways, as I was saying, I didn't get, I moved my office around and I haven't yet actually set up. Um, my little spotlight that I use when I'm doing these. Um, so yeah, so that's six pearl and we're gonna go six knit. One, and two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yarn in front, six pearl. One, come on, two, come on, three. This is the only problem I have with this Pantone um, is that it splits really easy. I find most Charons do, uh, especially the Simply Soft. It does. Uh, that's why I, instead of using Simply Soft, I'll use Loops and Threads Soft and Shiny, just because Loops and Threads doesn't um, doesn't split as badly. And that's oops. Pretty sure that's six. Yeah, that's six. So that's six purl, and then we do six knit. One, two. Three, four, five, six, 
Okay, and then we knit the last stitch, just like that. There we go. Okay, so you can see the difference in the stitches. I don't know if you can see the difference in the stitches. So there's your pearls and your knits. And then we're gonna go back the other way. We're gonna do another row the same. So we knit the knits and we purl the pearls. And that's one for our knit. So knit one at the beginning and knit one at the end. Okay, and then we're gonna do six knits. Two, three, four, five, and six. And remember, this is only one way. There are many different ways out there of doing basket weave. It all depends on who you talk to um, and where, what site you go to as to what they're gonna define a basket weave as, all right? Some of them say that it's uh, multiples of nine plus whatever. Um, this one is just multiples of six plus two. So it's, it's super simple. Um, there's two. three, four, five, and six. And then we go back over here and we do six more. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And like I said um, so many times, these are, what we're doing is we're building on what we learned the week before, right? So we learned how to do ridging last week. So there was three stitch rows, three purl, oh, sorry, three, sti three purl stitches, three knit stitches. Um, so we're building on that. Okay, so instead of going all the way up, we're gonna be alternating. Two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. And then we're going to go back the other way. There's one. Two, three, four, five, six, and then we knit our last stitch. Just like that. All right, so we have three rows of uh, three rows completed here. Okay, and then we're gonna go back the other way. Okay, and this way we're gonna knit our first stitch, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna purl this time. So we're gonna purl the knits and knit the pearls. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then we're gonna knit the knits. Sorry, knit the pearls, not knit the knits, knit the pearls. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, and then we're going to purl the knits. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then we're going to knit again. Two, three, four, 
five and one, six. And then our last set are pearls. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we knit the last stitch. All right, just like that. So as you can see, we have a pattern emerging. All right. Now this is one way of doing it, okay? Not by any means the way of doing it, it's one way of doing it. So the next two rows, you're gonna knit the knits and purl the pearls. So that's two more rows. And then back when, after you've got the three rows there, then you're gonna go and uh, knit the pearls and purl the knits. And you're gonna do two rows of knit the pearls, uh, knit the knits, purl the pearls. All right, so you're gonna go with a total of 44 rows. Um, so 43 rows of uh, actual knit, and then one row of uh, cast off. So you have a total of 44 at the end of it. All right, so that's our basket weave for knit, and we will see you uh, tomorrow for We Learn Wednesday. Ta.